Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Welcome to the show, guys. Welcome. Big show. Big, big, show. big show. Uh, I'm excited. Hey, yeah. How was, uh, I don't want to get off on the wrong foot. I know I always say that and then I, I end up bringing I can handle it. Down. Yeah, I can handle it. How was Donald Rumsfeld's funeral? Ooh. Uh, well, you know, there's a lot of singing, a lot oh. of crying. Mm, and mm, mm. Uh, I think at the end of the day, yeah, the thing that I liked the most is that Rummy wanted us to give oh. him a Viking funeral, and you oh, know, what and is that, we, what is that again? When you uh, we take a hundred million dollar yacht and uh, we uh, set a, a C four across the bow, C like four plastic explosives. Yes, and like, then like uh, in the movies, when, like in all the movies, when they say C four, that kind of C four, exactly. And then we take it out to a coral reef and. Hit that button and bam. Wow. Good night. Good night. That must have been really nice. Really yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And, and you know, and uh and what made it really beautiful too is when the coral exploded like that. You saw yeah. all these wonderful colors just exploding out of the ocean. It was yeah. really, really well. That's really, interesting really because wonderful. there's actually a big problem with uh coral. You know, uh, it's a lot yeah, of coral reefs are, are protected because it's uh well, and endangered it's hard and, for your feet. Yeah, but that's not the problem. That's just naturally the uh, the texture but, of it is very hard. Yeah, yeah when but, I'm swimming in the ocean, I'll I'll step on it and it'll just break away like I'm on I don't know. Like yeah, some you're not you're not supposed rock. to. Yeah, well, you're not supposed to be stomping on the coral. Anyway, we're we're getting All right. <laughs> again off, off you know, on the wrong foot. Yeah, you know, but uh, but we had a great time and oh, great, uh, you know great, a lot great, of yeah. a lot of a lot of great memories. Yeah, a lot so of people in the chat asking. are asking why I look so flushed, why my cheeks are so rosy. Hmm. Um, straight up, I'll just uh, I love to uh, address the audience and in, in all of their questions. Sure. Um, it's because I'm in my garage and where I live right now, it's probably 175 degrees, and I'm in like uh, this um, metal here behind me acts like a. <laughs> a uh, refractor uh, 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 uh what's it called in an oven where it, like you know you you it's like a superconductor you're yeah, sitting like in a front super, of it yeah, yeah exactly so it's, that's all radiating the heat uh through the back of my head and onto my face so uh you know rob i did get away for fourth of july yes and, um, i heard about that how did how was it where did you go uh we went to sedona sedona arizona oh and, you love it there you oh love i there. love uh mm. the vortexes getting yeah. in the vortex i will tell you that i've had some of the the trippiest conversations with the uh the uber drivers to and from uh <laughs> in sedona yeah in sedona it was it was a wild it was wild <laughs> yeah uh but but um the most embarrassing thing about it was and i forget that my kids don't understand television like we have apple tv yeah. and they have pretty much free reign on apple tv we okay. go to this hotel and we're getting unpacked and they immediately jump to the tv mm. and i see that they are buying pay-per-view and i'm like all right guys hold on before we agree on like let, let's talk about this let's figure out what like pay -per -view not, we're not, buying not, not like adult movies no no i mean that that we have yeah. that on a zip drive um and so sorry what you you travel with a zip drive of pornography yeah i don't want to have any trail of that at like the hotel would know what i was into okay okay keep going sorry i didn't sorry i didn't want to slow us down keep going okay and i also could i mean very it's very hard to find the things that i find uh sexy on yeah hotel adult television oh i see that's not so like the porn offerings on a hotel system it's wouldn't, it's wouldn't adult be, entertainment. okay so so it wouldn't be uh like hardcore enough for you or it's just wouldn't be specific to I'm your looking genre. for I'm looking for you know uh man yeah. meets woman in a comical mm. way maybe woman is carrying packages and man is carrying packages and then they bump into each other and then the man picks up some of the woman's oh. packages and and then you know and then about like 80 yeah. or 70 minutes pass and and they they keep on trying to meet up and then oh. um and they finally, when they do meet up, uh, they flirt a little bit okay. and then, uh, and then they share like a very chaste kiss. That's kind of what I'm into. That's kind of, stuff oh, that okay. me, you know, yeah. 
That sounds ready like to go. you got mail or something like that. Ooh, yeah. Now you're talking my language, buddy. Yeah. I don't want to, this is not this kind of show. I don't want to get this too yeah, dirty, yeah. but yeah. You right, know. right, right, um, right. But, uh, so, so, the, like, so they start in the room. Yeah. They're like, they're watching TV and I just kind of ignore it. And I had to go check on something. And, uh, I just happened to like, look at my bill when I was in the front of the hotel. And I saw that within the first three hours of being there, we had $197. <laughs> of charges <laughs> on her room from pay-per-view movies every one of them 26.99 and it yeah. was like bam 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 and i was like it would be it would have been impossible to even watch all these but there were uh two rooms uh for a, a two rooms in an adjoining kids room so on all three televisions there are multiple pay-per-views going <laughs> firing oh simultaneously gosh. and i had to go and explain to the uh, the clerk that uh yes these are all tom and jerry the movie but uh we we <laughs> we, didn't we did not mean it. it yeah 75 times uh did they do fireworks in arizona or no. is it illegal it's illegal no it was like they were just getting over like they, they had closed the parks in arizona yeah, like yeah. you couldn't even go in so yeah, yeah. there was a, there was nothing there uh besides the vortex which as we as we drove in our driver said uh you know, a lot of people when they get here, uh, they can't sleep for days oh. and because uh, the energy is so high. Mm. And that's not like what you want to hear as you're driving <laughs> into a <laughs> with your kids. Um, now, let me ask you this, because I'm not that familiar yeah. with what you're talking about. You're throwing yeah. around the term vortex. Very. I never casually. heard it either. Yeah, I never heard it either. So you're saying that in Arizona, uh, there in is Sedona. An Oh, it's specifically in Sedona. There's an yes. energy vortex that, what is it, Two. like a, a meetup of different fields of energy and supposedly you you feel crazy? Apparently, or... you're very low. You're beneath where, I mean, you're very low. I don't know why the vortexes are happening, but where we landed, that was a major vortex. When we got off the plane, people were, there were <laughs> tons of tour buses and people are standing in the vortex trying to get some of that sweet vortex energy. And then I found out that yeah. our hotel was in the vortex. And so, oh. and so many people just stand there to get healed. And, uh, oh, wow. It's and, got and healing properties. I didn't know it had healing properties. Well, as our driver told us, one of the people, uh, came there very sick and mm. went to, uh, <laughs> went to one of the wizards. He Wait called a them a... <laughs> Okay. He, my driver told me, uh, that, uh, there's a few local wizards in, <laughs> and I know this to be true because in front of the whole foods, there is a statue of a wizard, uh, oh, a okay. fully bronze, uh, wizard. And, uh, and so the wizards, at uh, the whole go, foods. that's well, a, the oh, wizard is not shocker. Yeah. The, I yeah they, believe the, that there's one at the whole foods, the wizard, um, the wizard, uh, if you go to his lair, I did not go to the wizard's lair. Some people go to the wizard and then they stay in Sedona for a couple months and then completely healed. Yeah. Wow. I, I will now, tell you that, yeah. uh, we all had trouble sleeping. Everybody in our party could not sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was a true, that well, was that a, could, our, that, you know, that could be because of, you know, you're in a hotel and it's a different place. And I don't know. I, I feel like yeah. for me, my wife and my kids to all wake up. Yeah. Uh, at the exact same time and not mm. be able to go to sleep. I felt like, you know, maybe we we're getting healing properties. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I, yeah. Did it, did it do anything for, uh, you know, for your, uh, for your wiener? I mean, like, that's what I was hoping. I, uh, you know, I kept I'm just, it out. I'm of my trying pants. to, I'm trying to illustrate it like this. So yeah, I, uh, I kept it, I kept it out of my pants the majority of the time, uh, just for the hoping of the healing property the healing. Yeah. 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 To yeah get in yeah. there. That's um, good. I'll, also, one of the other things that was a selling point of uh, Sedona was it's the only McDonald's in the country without golden arches because mm. uh, the golden arches are illegal uh, there because they they need it to be uh, one of the darkest places in the world. I guess the, the, the darkest place is Flagstaff, and this is uh, the second 
dark. Oh, you place, mean just so. from like light pollution? Like, yes. they, oh, they want it to be super dark. So there's no like signage or no neon. Yeah. Signage. So it's all for stargazing. A lot of stargazing oh. goes on there. So, what about uh, aliens and UFOs? Did you see any UFOs or aliens? I um, saw a couple of Bigfoots, two Yetis. <laughs> really? Uh, but yeah, but they Bigfoots were also there. And the Yetis. Wow. They were there on vacation. And, uh, and that was sort of like a mixed marriage, which is kind of cool. I never knew yeah. that Bigfoots and Yetis could get together like that. But they're very. Very that. cool. Yeah, very, very cool. You, you know what else is illegal in Arizona mm. is voting. <laughs> hey, oh, topical. Topical. Yes. Topical. Yes. yes. Um, so, but, they, but there is a thing for real about like, a lot of people see UFOs there. Maybe it is just because it's darker and people get confused because of the vortex. They're like, what the fuck? Those stars look like a UFO. But Well, there's the biggest asteroid or meteor landing in like outside of Sedona, I believe. Okay. Like, yeah. So there's some things the, there. The, I mean, the the meteor just landed. It didn't. It didn't crash into the earth. It just sort of landed. It, Is that what you're it saying? Kind of plopped. It kind of plopped out like uh, like a like a, a rogue sock from a laundry basket as you're carrying it up a flight of stairs. Like that's the kind of uh, trajectory it had. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. So, so that you know. So, so that, that so that's no fireworks. Fair. Well, did, so did you? So you didn't even hear. Because I will tell you, I know yeah. everyone jokes about this and everyone says this, so I won't beat it up too long. But like the fireworks here in L.A. have gotten and I know I sound like my dad, but it's fucking crazy. The fireworks here like it's crazy. They I, we live near the Rose Bowl and the Rose Bowl yeah. does a whole you know thing at like nine o'clock and our kids are already asleep at nine o'clock. But like. Right. It, you know, two in the afternoon, it starts and it's been going on for like a month. Now it's now oh, yeah. it's done. But like it was all night long, the most intense, like like it felt like you were in a war. And then the next morning I went outside at like six in the morning and legit there was still like the smell of gunpowder everywhere. It was crazy. And on the news uh, you know, my wife does the morning news and she was saying that there were all these like uh, air air uh quality warnings that day like oh yeah don't go outside today it's just totally destroyed you could literally watch like from where like from where the uh from where like the air quality got bad like as soon as the fireworks started like you saw like this steep decline but yeah i guess that was like one of the benefits of not being here i did you know every time the dodgers win i hear it loud and clear right out of my window it's like bah, 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 yeah. Bah, 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 bah. but yeah people were freaked i mean you have a, a new a dog how did that dog do with that she was okay. Yeah, she was okay. Um, I think she's an older dog. She's a, okay. She's been around the block. So I think she was like cool with that. But, you know, we used to have, yeah, when we had our German Shepherd, he was not down for fireworks. He would like go in the bathtub and, you know, <laughs> cower. But um, I wanted to show you, I've been working on an yeah. impression. I don't know. Um, sure. Do you like, do you like impressions, Paul? I, I feel like oh, I do. Fred I Travelina, it. Rich Little. Those are, those are my guys. Frank Caliendo. Yeah, I'm okay, in. Great, great. Because uh, I've been compared to Frank Caliendo a lot. Yes, and, uh, you have been. I did want to oh. do my impression of uh, a guy watching fireworks. Um, but the guy is, uh, he's one of those guys that's like colorblind. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm actually putting you in full screen for this. All right. Go, go for okay, it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all right. Thank you. <laughs> that's wow, that was good. I like that. I like yeah. that. You know, I, but uh, do you yeah. understand why it's funny? Because, you know, if you were colorblind, you'd be like, anyway, <laughs> think about well, it. I mean, it's, it's one I of those mean, like, you think about you still, when you, you think still... about it, it's, it's better when you think about it. So think about it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do can, it. can I just do it again? Can yeah. you pop me? Yeah. Can you make yeah, me yeah, full yeah, screen again? Yeah. I think it might be, let me, it might be. All right. What do you got? Yeah. twice. Okay. So here's a guy, he's colorblind. He's watching fireworks. Oh man, I gotta get the subway. The sandwich, the sandwich shop. Paul, I'm still doing it. Oh, okay. okay. <sighs> what time does the fifth start? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. All right. Thanks. That was. I mean, that was good. I mean, again, I think you know. Well, he's I, I color someone... blind, so he would only see. You know, he would see flashes, At... but he wouldn't. Uh, that's he wouldn't true. see I, colors, you know. Well, I I am also a little bit colorblind, and I understand. Oh, I didn't the, know that. Yeah, a little bit, but I it doesn't prevent me from under from seeing the majesty. I may not see the colors, but I mean, yeah. I you know, I, I, can I do an impression of? Uh, oh, I'll please! Do an this is a, this is my favorite part of the show. All right, great. This is, is impression. my impression. This is my impression of um of someone 
who feels like they stumbled across well this is someone on uh on fourth of july uh taping fireworks okay here we go oh boy everyone's gonna want to see this <laughs> oh yes yes should i story this or should i put this in the grid because this is good stuff that's me that's my that's my guy uh that's my that was, guy who yeah i really like that i really like that a lot as yeah. long as we're doing impressions and um yeah. i just saw this in my garage so i can do i can do this um I want to do another impression. This is not about fireworks or 4th mm -hmm. of July, but when I was talking about the colorblind thing, it gave me yeah. a whole new inspiration for a, a new, uh, a new impression that I want to do. And I don't know, do you, are, do you ever use the app called Instagram? Do you know what that is? I've heard about it. I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm oh, still man. in you, my You would space. love it. You would love yeah, it. Okay. Oh, Paul, you've got to get off my space, man. I've been I'm telling in. you. I, no I got my, cares. I got my top no, eight. No one's even on my space. Anyway, mm -hmm. Instagram has you know videos and photos and there's a type of uh video that i see a lot on instagram and mm -hmm. and and if you ever checked out the app you'd probably see this a lot but i really love it and it always gets me emotional because it's so sweet and emotional and, and, and real but so this is my impression of uh one of my favorite types of videos on instagram it's the one where uh, <laughs> thank you it's the this hold is on, my impression hold on Hold on, yeah. let me bring you. Let me, I got my lost control of my mouse here for a second. Oh, That's okay. Hold on. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Molly. Okay. okay this is my impression of one of my favorite types of videos on Instagram the video where a colorblind person gets the colorblind glasses and can oh, see colors yes. for the first time. Okay. So here's my impression of that. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Wow. Fuck. Fuck. Did you, Steve, did you know about this? How come fucking no one told me, man? Seriously. Why didn't anyone tell me this is so fucking cool? I've been seeing black and white for 25 years because you fucking assholes wouldn't buy me a hundred dollar pair of glasses. Do you know how fucking cool this is? All these colors. This is amazing. This right here is bullshit. Fuck you, Steve. You're not my friend. Thank you. Wow. Wow, Rob. That was great. But Molly, pop me in there. I, I want to I wanna show one more. Uh, this is uh, me uh, continuing my impression of, uh, of the person who's just taking some great uh, photos on the 4th of July. And uh, this, is, this is what I got here. Okay. See how many likes I got. Oh. Okay, let's refresh. Huh, did it, maybe it didn't upload? Why is not not, no comments, no likes, huh? No comments, no likes. No comments, no likes. Why doesn't anyone, why doesn't anyone like my fireworks picture? God damn it, God damn it. <sighs> Noose. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, you'll remember me when I'm dead. Oh my gosh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That got so dark. And yeah. I'm glad that you said noose because I didn't yeah. know exactly what that was at the beginning. Yeah. You know, um, uh, yeah, that was just, you know, again, it was sort of like, uh, it, you know, what I like about oh. impressions is impressions that tell a story too. Um, you know, uh, but Rob, you know, we are, we are talking about, uh, uh, you know what's going on on the internet i don't know if you have any more impressions mm. but i wanted to show you some of the memes that have oh, been going yeah. on with us uh in our discord uh a lot of memes have been coming up uh memes that started that we don't really understand why uh but uh i thought we would kind of show so this these right are here. all these are all from viewers of the show that yes. took time out of their their day these are this this is real this is not a bit this is 100 real these, these are, real. are these okay. are real memes uh, and this kind of, this is from Brissy Joe kind of going on that same thing that we had before. I think it was color. So this is bull shear and, uh, frog Hubel. That's great. That's great. So, bull uh, you know, shear and frog Hubel. I, I don't, yeah. I don't fully get it. Like, is don't, there, yeah. do we, does it need 
any kind of context or like, was this part of a conversation in the chat? I don't, or I don't think don't it was. Yeah. I think this is just something that people have responded yeah. to. And, and, uh, they, they did one for Jason and June as well. They have uh, oh, raccoon great. Diane Raphael and, uh, Jason, uh, man, man, cats. Zet cats. So that's a little, you know, yeah, uh, they look, great. they look pretty good. Now, let me ask you a question, Paul, yeah. cause you're, you're pretty good at Photoshop. Um, does something like this take a long time? Hours. Like, should we be flattered at the amount of labor this, that went into this? This, these, these should be sold as NFTs. I mean, okay, this is like okay. people level stuff. Um, wow. I, I'll, I'll show you some other good stuff that we have here. This is a uh, oh, full shear. This is from uh, a yeah. Jack Rapsy full shear. So, yeah. uh, again, you know, it, it, so it, I like took the a, pose. that took a long time. That took a long time. To oh, do hours, that. uh, to get the face yeah. exactly right. The eyes and the exactly lighting, right. the lighting matches perfect. I mean, it barely looks like, yeah, you can't tell if that's a real animal or not. This is, uh, I, I want to show you this one. This is uh, another <laughs> one from you. Uh, this is you as Bill Murray. I don't understand exactly why. I, for a second, I actually had to stop and think, was I in the movie Ghostbusters? Because when I'm looking at this, the shading and the lighting is so identical yeah. to theirs. And you can't even really tell that that's Photoshop. So I, I really did a double take and I thought, was I in wow. Ghostbusters? And I, and I, I, I remember now that I was not. A lot of times memes have something to do with something said or something spoken about, but these well, that's probably, seem to that's be, probably, yeah, that may be for, from the ghost show. Cause I've been doing the ghost okay. show on here. Oh, you know, so. right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. That makes me happy. Uh, yeah. this one, uh, this one is not, uh, something, uh, well, obviously people make fun of me. because I do a lot of plugs. Uh, mm. and so this is from sellers Mac and it was a, uh, stop hair loss before it's too late. Take action today. Yeah. Uh, and that's me with a full head of hair and clearly, this is a failed sponsorship. It failed did not sponsorship. Work. Yeah, this is a little mean spirited for my taste. I mean, uh, I would, yeah. I would caution people that you know, just because we're huge, huge uh, Twitch stars and influencers. Yeah, and you don't want to. You know, it's like we we all we have feelings and emotions, and uh, is a lot of times I get off Twitch. I got to go and cry it out sometimes because I read the comments and it's just a little mean. So this is straight up yeah. mean. And this uh, is like, you know, clearly my, my, my keeps, you know, this is more about keeps, you know, I didn't believe in me or I didn't believe in keeps. Uh, but this is me. I remember this is a sweater that I had a lot of fondness for when I first started auditioning. I think I would even wear it in the summer when I was auditioning. I felt like it had a good look to it. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, so I think that that might be the end of the oh final meme. Is oh, meatball great. in the great. Obama? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I will say it's a little hard to make out where meatball begins and ends. Uh, it's kind of like the old school Batman logo, uh, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but I see it now. Like uh, there is there is an eye. There's yeah. the other eye. Uh, now ag like again, it. would this would this take a long time to do? Would this, this would take several hours. I mean days, days, days. maybe even. You know, yeah. but this is nice because uh, you know obviously meatball and Obama share uh share a lot of similarities so that is uh mm -hmm. just some memes uh some solid memes from the from the discord but rob we have a great great show we have great people on the show tonight uh here to give us a finals an nba finals preview we have uh the host of the Dunktown podcast but before them tonight we have i mean uh one of the greats uh this guy is a fantastic actor who seemingly has been in everything good and funny and dramatic uh, you know him from everything from the deuce to Santa Claus to, uh, uh, Serenity, the Firefly movie. Uh, there's been so many great things that he's been a part of. Uh, please welcome David Crumholtz. David, what's up, buddy? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest with you. Um, what's up, buddy? That, that, that intro made me like scared. I, I don't want to, I don't know how to live up to my name. You know, well, I, by uh, the way, people are yeah. people are filling up the chat with every other credit that you have. They're like, oh, yeah. "What about numbers? What about yeah. ten things I hate about yeah. you? What about yeah. you I've know the people, trail yeah. of real gems behind me?" That's and, the name uh, of the game. That's the name of the you're game. You're supposed to follow them and eventually find me, but guess what? I won't be there. I don't exist. Oh, <laughs> Only my characters do. Oh, Isn't that shit. pretentious? David Cromwell is... doesn't exist. But his characters do. <laughs> I like um, it. My character will live on. 
That's Krumholtz, are you on yeah. the are you on the East Coast? Where How are you guys are you doing? Where? I'm so happy to see you. I am on the East Coast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just see that it's dark where you are. And are you in a storage unit? I'm in a storage unit. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm okay. down in I'm down in my uh, I'm down in my uh, purge bunker in case the purge happens. Nice. And uh, wow. yeah, man. And Shears got a like a, they're not coming after you. When I think happened. Well, we don't know. We don't know. We That's don't the know. problem. Yeah. That's true. Um, you, and Sheer, you know, Sheer is so well lit and he's in like soft focus and all that. And <laughs> where I, is I, all of you? <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm in, uh, I'm in, uh, I'm in a studio uh, unit out in Van Nuys that I've uh, decorated into uh, a guest bedroom. So it feels accessible, but I got a whole crew here, uh, a team of 15 people and they're all back to one. Together, every, every so you're on, yeah, porn, one. you're on a porn set. I am, I am on an abandoned, because uh, like I felt like it was my duty during the pandemic to support the unused porn sets. Uh, right. So yeah, I definitely so did you that. carry your own <laughs> porn zip file and you use <laughs> yeah. a porn set. Yeah. Did yeah. I podcasts from what is happening? I don't know. I don't know if I told you both this um, on is the it league. A, it is a, is a porn, it is a porn it's story a porn on thing. the league. Yeah. Uh, we were shooting in this building and, and in downtown LA before people realized they could make a lot of money by building very nice studios. There were these very crappy studios. Rob and I shot a majority of Human oh, Giant sketches. Yeah, Human Giant was filmed on porn sets in downtown <laughs> LA, for sure. <laughs> we, Most of it. We literally saw a naked man wearing like a, a army hat one time who was shooting a porn movie called Letters to Lonnie, uh, but just standing Peanut. there with a very erect penis, just hanging out. Peanut. Like, Peanut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Peanut. It's good. It's a good Rated one. Rated it on Pornhub. <laughs> I rate. I don't just watch. I rate. I'm one of those guys. <laughs> you make comments. So, on Pornhub. <laughs> I make comments. Yeah, I comment. By the way, uh, the, the comments on Pornhub, always uh, so positive. The only place on the internet where uh, everyone <laughs> seems to be <laughs> like, hey, great work. Really enjoyed uh, this. Some of them are really, really uh, deep. I mean, uh, there was one, there's one actress who's who's really verbal uh, and she, well, she doesn't do it anymore, but she was very verbal and she was very creative with what she said. And she was very, and someone on the, in the comments section, I remember called her the Cicero of porn. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's, that's really nice. Wait, Paul, what was your story yeah. about the league? So, so you, so we you were, were shooting, shooting a scene right. and, uh, and our DP, we're all on the couch. It's like, we're playing a game. Like a, we're over at someone's house for a Christmas party. We're all playing a game and we're all sitting on this couch. And our DP comes over and he's like, um, check this out. And he shows us a still from a porn on that very couch where two people were just having very hardcore sex. And we had to then <laughs> sit on this couch for the remainder of the day, knowing that it was we like we were there. And then I guess other people had caught on to it because then I started to see like tumblers where they were just putting our still on top of the other still like we were in the same couch on the same couch in the same living room and it was such an to know that to like to know look, it right to know it in the like i don't care if i find out about it later sure whatever i can't protect that but to know it in the moment is uh is well and people worry about the cum stains but for me it's the anal drippings that the oh, idea yeah. that there might have been anal drippings right, um, right. that bothers yeah. me a lot more yeah, that actually this happened in a house that I, I i i bought a house and uh in LA in the Hollywood Hills when I thought I was going to be successful for a long time. And uh, <laughs> it had an elevator in it. And, uh, <laughs> an elevator? It had an elevator in it. Uh. <sighs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I, really, I really blew it. But um, it, I was watching a porn and it was filmed. I was like two months after we moved in and it had been filmed in my house. And I called no my wife. No way. In your uh, house? In my house, and I called my wife into the room, and I said, "Look at this." <laughs> of course, I pulled my trousers up because she doesn't want to see it. But she took a look, and we called the owners who had just sold us the house, and we said, "Were you guys renting out the house to?" And they were two. I mean, there were two. Um, you ever see that show, Million Dollar Listing? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Two, they were. It was the two brothers. The brothers. The, it was. They, it was their house. <laughs> and and they were throwing crazy parties and shooting porns in oh, their house. Yeah. And uh they were also strangely enough both kickers for high like 
NCAA like uh, football teams. They were both really, you know, they, I think one of them won a championship. Or the something. two, the two guys on Million Dollar the Listings two were, are place, listing. were football place kickers. Correct. <laughs> and yeah. rented out their houses for <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is a hundred percent. And uh, oh. my my wife reupholstered all because they were built in couches. Okay, so my, no. they were built ins. Yeah. Oh, so my no. wife had it reupholstered and redone and everything, but yeah, and she had the same concern I did. It wasn't a cum thing; it was an anal dripping thing. Oh, for her, for her oh, yeah. as well. For the more you, the more you throw around that term, I feel like, yeah. um, I feel like the less comfortable I am. I know you think you're Sorry. making me more comfortable with it. Yeah, no, because um, I know you like that kind of stuff. But I, I, I get no. When when, that when we're I first when I first right moved, now. <laughs> when I first moved to LA, I did that classic. Uh, that dumb thing that people do to famous people where oh, I was in a, God. I was in a restaurant in, uh, where's my wife. I got to look around. My, my wife is not in the garage. Um, uh, I think, I think I was on a, I think I was on a date with someone. Don't tell, don't tell my wife that I ever went on a date. My, my, my <laughs> wife, my wife thinks that I married her when we were 16. Cause that's what I told her. Uh, no, no, I, I, but I was on, I was on like a date or something. And, um, at some restaurant in the Valley and, I saw this guy that I totally thought I knew, you know, I was like, Oh, uh, I think I went to high school with this guy. And I was just marching over to him and I got about two feet away and I was like, Oh, he's a guy from porn. And I've seen him only oh. come on people. And I was like, and he saw me coming at him, like coming in hot with like a handshake, like, Hey bro. And I was like, Oh, I don't know you at all. <laughs> I saw uh, a porn actor, a male porn actor, uh, at the Vons on uh, Pass Avenue in Burbank. Oh. And I said, hey, you're awesome to him. This was many years ago. <laughs> and he looked at me and literally gave me like the ill look. Like, oh. what's wrong with you, dude? Why would don't you call me out like that? Like, <laughs> don't be that guy. That's I, am awkward, but still. I, I do want to just circle back to it because it's worthy just to to engage with where did this elevator go to and from yeah. in the yeah. house like how it big was a was four the story house? house okay <sighs> it sounds great it sounds it, like it a great was, house I, I lived down the street from kanye west wow who wow. never who would never say hi to me when i would pass him walking my dog <laughs> oh boy and uh and even though I would, I would say, "Hey, how's it going?" He would never. Um, the, uh, the, we had a basement, an actual basement in L.A. It went underground, which okay. is terribly unsafe. I don't think yeah. any of this building that I lived in. It was an <laughs> apartment building, no joke. Okay. That they had converted into a lofty house thing, castle, yeah. medieval wow. castle. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was strange. I, I threw parties there. It was fun. Um, but were you a single apart. person when you no, bought this I was house? married. Okay. We, okay. We, we, we were married and, uh, we thought this was the house where you raise the children, right? Yeah. Some shallow palace with an elevator in it in the middle of the Hollywood <laughs> Hills down the street from <laughs> Kanye West. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was really bad. It was really disastrous. And, um, uh, I lost a lot of money on that house. It was impossible to sell. No one wanted it. The elevator yeah. broke. We like within like a year of moving in, we had to replace the elevator engine, which oh. was like eleven thousand dollars or something oh, insane. Man. You know, <laughs> oh, shit. and uh, and uh, yeah, lost a lot of money on that house. Lost uh, <laughs> lost quite the nut on yeah. that house. And uh, that that's that network TV money though. Like the the only yeah. other house that I've been in where I've seen an elevator uh like that was also and you know um uh I hope I'm not being name droppy but Megan Megan Mullally has an elevator in her house. Ooh. And uh, but that's the same thing. And like, you know, the money that we make on like cable shows is you know and I'm not complaining but like people think that like oh these people are billionaires like the people that make a fuckload of money are like network sitcom or network drama you know and like so that's well, they, the only time i've seen they ought, to pay, you, they ought to pay well, you to do that level of shit but um <laughs> <laughs> no i shouldn't say that i love that show that i did what was it again I, I i i try not to think about it too often but no um it, it, i you know eddie murphy wore one purple leather glove 
Uh, and I saw an interview with him where he was like, where they asked him, hey, when you were in your 20s doing Raw and whatever, did you go crazy like with the money and the fame? And he said, he literally said, well, didn't you see Raw? I wore one purple leather glove. <laughs> and that house was my purple leather glove. Like that was like me thinking <laughs> that <laughs> I've made it. I've been embraced by the by Hollywood forever. Yeah, I'm the yeah, Mickey yeah. Rooney of my generation. And I, even Mickey Rooney ended up being abused. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the difference for people they want to know, like uh, people who are on network TV shows, they can buy elevators. People are on cable shows. Uh, we do escalators. I have two escalators. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, is, that's yeah. how I get up. <laughs> yeah. Yours is just a series, a series yeah, of escalators. Yeah. yeah I got very, it's very there. MC There's only, they're only up escalators. You got to yes. jump down. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't you run hard down the thing. I can't afford uh, escalator. We just have one of those moving sidewalks, like in the Ooh, airport. So it's nice. Awesome. It is yeah. nice, but it's not the same. Like it's harder to get yeah. upstairs. And you got to be um, careful when you get off. You got to. Yeah, yeah, right off. <laughs> yeah. Um, Crumholtz, are you living in New York? Are you working? Are you hanging I live, out? I live in New Jersey. Okay. Uh, I didn't work for sixteen straight months. Wow. That was terrifying. Yeah. Uh, I'm now working on an HBO thing with uh, called White House Plumbers, and it's a water uh, man. with Dave Mandel with uh, with all yes, the great and with Woody Mandel. Harrelson. Yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. I got that part. <laughs> it was me, guys. Uh, no, um, it's very nice to be working. Uh, I, I, it scared the living hell out of me. It's still a little scary. I just turned down a thing, and uh, it's scary. I don't know. I'm scared. I hate being an actor. Can I just say that? Yeah, no, I loathe it at this point. I've been doing it for almost thirty years. And really and truly, it's been a good 16 or 17 years since my prime, since I feel like I was <laughs> worth anything to this business other than <laughs> love fat boy who says shit uh, in interesting ways. Um, it doesn't matter if I'm if you're good. It, you, you know, it, the reason the, the Writers Guild of America is so powerful is because writing has to be of some quality. Acting does not have to be of any quality whatsoever anymore. <laughs> no one knows the difference between a good actor and, and no one cares. No <laughs> one cares. And so the Screen Actors Guild is powerless. Uh, I am uh, a victim of, of theirs. I feel I live in a victim mentality <laughs> and I should not have chosen to do what I do for a living. It's over, it's been over, and now I'm just kind of spreading myself way too thin. You know, it's it's like there's there's just nothing. There's nothing left on the on the on the on well, the bagel. Is it, the bagel is, is dry. Is it that you um is it the uh sort of feast or famine uh way about the business or is it that like is it that you don't like not knowing how when you're going to work again and all that because i mean that's just sort of it is what I it is i don't like the emotional roller coaster of it yeah yeah i don't like being judged mercilessly <laughs> by morons within the industry <laughs> by children you know you go in and pitch a show to like netflix or hbo now and you literally are meeting children in the room <laughs> That go, oh my God, you were so funny in that thing I saw when I was two, you know. <laughs> and, and you're like, you're like, wow, man, this is this is like a night. There's no, um, there's no oversight. Uh, and also, I hate that I've become so honest. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that it brings out the worst in me. I've become bitter and rude, yeah. and uh, and and I just like I live. This is why I live in New Jersey. You ask me where I live. I live in New Jersey. Yeah, and I hang around the most Jersey people I can find. Yeah, uh, to for some sense of of humility and so, now, yeah. what what would you do? Would you be what would call, make you what would make you happy? <laughs> what what would what would make you happy? Would you be happy if White House Plumbers got season ten and you were doing White House Plumbers for and you know you knew. 
that you were going to be working on HBO for 10 years? Would that a home would be nice. A, a long term <laughs> home of some sort would be nice. Uh, I, these are all limited series. That's all I've been right. doing is series that end after like a few episodes. And then I only do like a couple of the few episodes. But uh, uh, I would like to be a Marvel character. I would like for Marvel this is, to do yeah, the right thing. Is, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and, but, but the problem is there's only so many Marvel characters or so few Marvel characters that I can, <clears throat> you know, play. Best case scenario, I'm a guy who has to turn into a monster of some sort to fight. Right. Yeah. There's no way yeah. anyone would believe that I am a superhero and I don't want to work out. I have no interest in it. even if they paid for my trainer and did that whole thing. You don't, you do don't, it. you don't I'd have any, no. you have no, fa okay. so like, like the way that Kumail has transformed his body, yes. uh, there, that is not appealing to you. Like where you basically have to go on autopilot. All you have to do is show up and you just work hard. Like they're paying you to work that you have no desire to do. I'm liable to hurt myself. I think that's okay. what it is. And, and, and I don't want to, so the thing, you know, Ben yes. Grimm in the Fantastic yeah. Four. That's the mm. best case scenario. A little, right a guy, there he is. Wow, yeah. that's so weird that you had it queued up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, a guy we're, who's we're like fast. a little, little guy who, who's just like a regular guy who becomes a monster is it that works for me, but that's the best case scenario. I yeah. realistically, I feel like I have a shot if they ever do, because he was another Fantastic Four villain. If they ever do Mole Man, I'm a very, I think Ooh. I'm right down the middle for Mole Man. Now, Mole, Mole Man, Man is an interesting character. That would be a great, like, yeah. if you don't know Mole Man, I, I will, uh, I'll show you a picture of Mole Man here. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, my mouse has been a little bit wonky. There's Mole Man. Mole Man, you know, it, it's a shorter, a shorter gentleman, uh, you right. know, but definitely you don't have to work out to be Mole Man. Dude, I am Mole glasses. Man. Look at that. <laughs> Just giving and you a baton. I I don't. I don't know uh, all of the Marvel characters. Mole Man. What is his deal? Like, what's his power? What's he? His, what's he his lives power? under the ground, and he controls. Okay. What so does he control rats or something? I mean, is, he has a whole. He has a, the mole. There's a whole like Mole Man story. Like, it, like it's a. He seemed. I think he's a, a superhero who seemed more powerful in the '60s. Like that's where he really yeah, came yeah, into. Yeah. You know. Uh, but yes, he's got some powers. It, it's not like Aquaman, but it's it's yeah it's a it's a base level of powers did it, I, did it yeah. um didn't um chickless when he did the thing uh didn't he go aren't there stories about him going crazy like for yeah. real because, in the makeup yeah because he was like so inside that thing for and it took forever he had fake and so, teeth right and he yeah. had fake teeth and he was like claustrophobic and sweaty and i think he literally went like kind of bananas. He I did a makeup it. gig. I did something yeah. like that. And it did drive me. You go, you feel so jealous of everybody getting to eat hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> I realize it's because they tell you, you can't chew, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I got to pull so, up a picture of this. Cause this, this show that you did was great. Uh, exactly. And uh, no I want to share about makeup. it at all, except you. I think you're the only fan, Paul. <laughs> well, you had, you, you, uh, what was the, the show? Was, and I'm going to pull up a picture as we're I, talking I, about. Okay. I created a TV show. That way, I make sure to say, I, I say it that way because uh, people uh, uh, automatically assume that I uh, don't self-generate. You see, and I have self-generated many <laughs> times over many years. Uh, people just assume, oh, he's just he's just a puppet, does the acting and does nothing else. Well, yeah. th they would be wrong. And as you can see by the lack of, oh, there it is. Yeah. Yes, I. That was the weather from. Yes, I. I. Uh, yes, let allow it. Yes. Oh, cancel it. And yeah. um, but no, that was a, a, a little clip from a, a show I did called GG Does It. That's me. Yes. In four and a half hours of. Uh, Oh of prosthetic God. and this was uh, the same people makeup. who did the bad grandpa makeup right or, or am i right same on that exact people who did the bad grandpa makeup and, and it and, looked um, amazing and you and embodied it's finally this character. six years later available on amazon prime whoa um, whereas before it was on amazon but you had to pay for every episode <laughs> yep and it was something um, like 59 cents and what did, what did you do in the makeup? Did you go around and like uh, you know kick people in the dick or uh, how, like? No, I don't... it wasn't a prank show like that. It was the all the joke was sort of meant to always be on me. So it was a hybrid reality show. There were written elements that I, I created it with Ricky, maybe, uh, and Ricky played my um, 
my, my little male nurse. And the idea was that we would go into situations with people not being aware that I was uh, a, a, a man inside yeah. this outfit, this makeup, uh, or aware. We didn't yeah. care. Like if they figured it out, we would immediately just say, okay, here's what we're going to do. Because there was never a prank done on these people. It was right. always yeah. sort of, hey, watch this lady be embarrass herself. Yeah. And that yeah. was the joke. Was all because we didn't want to do the prank thing. Um, yeah. But we 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 had fun. We shot every episode in two days. Um, it was there was no money. They called yeah. it a reality show, so it was non WGA, non DGA. <laughs> it was a fucking nightmare. It was a total I keep, nightmare. I keep, I keep laughing because Crumholds every every story you keep telling is like it starts off and it's like oh is, he's let me tell you it was non WGA. Have a happy, it's almost happy, and then no, it's not happy. It's no. not happy. It's not. <laughs> there's always a, there's always you know I it, it's the opposite whatever the opposite of a silver lining is to every story. <laughs> um, there's always just the rotten acid black streak no um <laughs> but no it 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 was uh it was a joy and uh i i loved it and i was in charge and i did a yeah. pretty damn fine job and i felt good about it yeah. and uh, no one watched it yeah the ifc was was failing at the time yeah, yeah. failing and failing and it now does not exist yeah as what, a what, as what a, happened that what, what did they become did they become something else well, they were always part of AMC. Oh, they were okay. like yeah, AMC's yeah, 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 comedy yeah. wing. Yeah, and then AMC started doing comedy and kind of usurped them. Right? You usurped them, and now they. I but don't even it, know. If a lot of these cable anymore. channels are like the picture from Back to the Future. The care like they just are erased from existence. It's like, I don't know. Like IFC yeah, is not yeah. there. There was no like Portlandia. Yeah. It wasn't Portlandia, Portlandia was their big, was their yeah. big hit. Yeah. yeah. And then they yeah, had yeah. documentary now and they right. were yes, like, right. wow, rocking. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then it just sort of woo, nosedived real quick with my show. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, but it, it exists somewhere and people can watch it. So you, I, I mean, just want to talk about the yeah. other Marvel character because oh, yes. I find sure. yeah. to be the, uh, yeah. It, and this would require me doing a French Canadian accent, which I have to work can on. Can you do that? Mind. Okay. I can mm -hmm. kind of do it. Fuck. Um, it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, supposedly they call they say the f word at the end of every sentence. But it, it, Puck from Alpha Flight. Does anybody remember? There, there he is. There he is. Yeah. Mm. Totally believable. He's very about, hairy. Very hairy. He's about. I, I believe he's of of. He, he's a little person. Yeah, which you know, technically they should cast a little person, but nowadays with the CGI folks, you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. You could you could do it. You could do it. Yeah. I mean, look but next to Chris Hemsworth, we be all wrong? look like little. People. Would it be wrong? I don't know. Maybe it'd be I wrong. I don't know. It's tricky. I look. I appreciate you wanting to get into this Marvel world because uh, really you know, look, it's it's your you you got spinoffs. You got a million different things you can do. I I always feel badly because yeah. as a bald man, mm -hmm. there are not many bald characters. Magneto. And Luke Cage, and then you're done. Then it's like a, it's a really we're going down to like Drax's daughter. It's like it's like there are very right. few bald characters in this in this world. So I like I am uh, you if know I, I I appreciate that. Painted you silver. Mm. Well, yes, yeah, silver, silver surfer. surfer. Yeah, there you are. That's great. Yeah, that's oh, a great you. idea. It's you. I, it's been yeah. you this whole time. Yeah, you should be it's silver like, surfer. Bald. Silver now. surfer. <laughs> I, I mean, but there is there is a world Old in which here as silver. <laughs> just, I mean, look, I'm ready to go. Get me in that. Get me in. Bob, Let me be you on it. You could play Magneto. I don't know. You know, I I feel like I would be good as like a secondary character. Like I always like the guys that have to come in and like clean up the mess of the main guy. Oh, you dude. know, like you know, like if Wolverine, you know, he fucking his claws come out and he rips up his whole house like i could come in there and be like oh come on wolverine look what right, you, you did to rebuild the house like a, yeah. and that would be a spin-off marvel show exactly. by the way like i've one pitched of those this show houses shows yeah i've pitched this show okay, this I, is very yeah. true there's a a marvel comic book called uh, damage control and okay. that's all they do is like after the superheroes fight, they come in and they're a bunch of contractors oh. and a lot of the, they work with superheroes who are like essentially union workers. Like, yeah, I can lift up 150. And, the show and they didn't, they didn't say, uh, uh well, I, it's, it's a many, I've, I've worked in many different ways in Marvel. I, I kind of brought 
then brought back brute force for a little bit and and different different things but damage control i think they introduced it in one of the spider-man movies i i think that kevin feige is very confident and secure about what he wants to bring in when he wants to bring it in and i don't think uh, a straight up comedy <laughs> about uh you know construction crew is right at the top of the list i don't think it's like loki and then damage control more of a phase eight yeah or 15. 15. uh you know for me i'd rather just be like you know i mean yeah i i think it's like by the time i'm about 70 i think damage control will be that will be the sweet spot you Can know we all <laughs> talk about what we're gonna do when we're old in terms of like <laughs> existential crises like when we're 70 years old will we be respected will you get paul will you get to play uh, a grandfather on Broadway. Rob, will you get uh, yeah. to the, the Well, that's why I, that's, that's why I'm embracing my gray hair I because I, I think I'm, that's so admirable. I'm trying to get ahead of this problem. I'm trying to put myself out there for these like uh, you know, FBI roles, you know, where I can come in and be like uh uh, uh where to go? Okay, here we okay, we got to rent a car and then we got to get down to the train station. Stat you know, so you I mean that and thought, I, I put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, I mean I was just improvising that dialogue. Obviously I've I've typed up some thoughts and ideas here right, but so, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am I am I am trying to reverse the process. So as you can see, this is really not going well here. It's fine. And it's so fine. I'm going to I have a hair transplant scheduled, guys. What? I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Are you I'm going to do it. Whoa. I'm going to do the thing that Paul never had the balls to do. I think it, everybody does it, right? Doesn't everybody, everybody that we know, uh, not every, not everybody Shocking. that we know, but a lot of people. A uh, lot of people. I will tell you that a lot of people Shocking. that you would be surprised by come to me and ask me about it. And I'm like, well, clearly I didn't, I, I didn't take that, <laughs> that path. Uh, so I have nothing to offer you here besides uh, good luck. Uh, but I saw someone who did it recently and paid uh twelve thousand dollars for it and it looks fucking fantastic mine is seventeen thousand wow well he yeah. was it better he be was his was like a round two. Oh, gee yeah yeah i feel like i feel like david spade always jokes about that that he just got you know an update and because i don't know how long how often you have to do another thing and like joel McHale always jokes about that he's always like oh look how much hair look how um, how much more hair I have now than I did in this picture. You know, it's like, no one cares. Like, I think, well, it's so fine. you're going to go for your, I want to, I want to, I want to no, follow this journey with you. Answer is, I feel like if I shave, if I do what you've done, mm -hmm. the, if I make the mistake you've made. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I feel like it's fat Nosferatu time you know what i mean it's like, it's i'm like, just working i'm working for the adam silver story the the commissioner of the nba like that's a, that's gonna be my oscar picture so i'm i'm going that route i gotta go there but they've uh, given you hair on black monday yes by my own choice uh right. that was like, like a character choice that i wanted to have this toupee because it rep whatever it represented something that i thought was interesting mm -hmm. uh and i like wearing hair and i like i can i like going back and forth between it but I'm finally at a point in my life uh, in the last handful of years where I'm completely comfortable with where my hair is at, where I, I have not been to before. Though. Great. Well, you're nice to say. I, if you me. suddenly got hair, remember when Jason Alexander did oh, it? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Suddenly, like he was a man who had literally become ridiculously rich and famous for being yeah. bald. Yeah, yeah. And then he showed up with hair to a premiere one day. And he called it, he called it a system. He said, my hair system. He did not say a transplant. It was a hair system. Uh, and that that made it even more bizarre to me. And the, the, it was like... The, uh, the, craziest, the craziest one is Travolta, though. Travolta has like some sort of weird like spray-on like triangle yeah. thing. It's that I guess... Things, yeah. But I, I, what's insulting about it... And look, I, I obviously colored my hair. I, I have... We all have issues with our hair, but mm. what's insulting about the Tra Travolta thing is that he thinks that we are that dumb. Like, that's what I don't like is that like, we're not totally like, you. you know, like that's it's a so obvious what he's piece you know. of, yeah. It's some you sort know, of thing about him is he's a handsome bald dude. 
he could he easily is. Yeah. from Russia great. with he love or from Paris with love. He looks great. He said Absolutely. something in an interview in Paris with love. And I, and, and David, I would almost love to come back to it. We have our, we have our next guest here. I don't want to keep him. Uh, I don't want to oh, keep on the burner. Too much. But uh, uh, John Travolta said, yeah, I shaved my hair off for this part because people were really excited and they wanted to see that I would look like bald. He was selling it. Like I only did this because America asked for it. And I think it looks pretty good. I was like, dude, just go, let's be straight here. Let's be straight. You, you did it because you're a bald man. That's okay. Like, I don't understand the fear about being uh, bald, but I, I, you know, I suppose, especially at a certain point when, if you are past like the sexy leading man, like why, why not try it well, out? Right. What, I'm got, not, what do you got to lose? I'm not quite there yet. I'm still, I think you look good. I think you I think your hair transplant look, look good. Cause you had enough hair there to work around. I shaved it during the pandemic. I'll say that. And this is the last yeah. thing I'll say. I know you got to get rid of me, but I shaved it during the pandemic and damn, it looked great. See there. You yeah. know, look, I, I, I will I tell you this. Had a nice head. Look I will that. tell you I, uh, well, to I'm anyone out there that is going bald. Ring uh, I will say this. Uh, don't mess around with getting your hair cut. Get yourself to a barber. Start getting it down. Get ahead of the game. You don't need those wispy things. Watch like, start, you know, you look great, David. I'm, I'm saying, but like, there's people b below you that don't, uh, that where they're kind of like walking this line. Like, I think it's okay. The sooner you commit to one side of it, the better you are. And that's how someone, no one told me that. And I, I recommend the podcast Bald Talk because it's just I'm doing people it. talking I'm about doing oh. it. I'm going to be doing it. And <laughs> do it. It's great. Preview, if you will. Oh yeah. I'll get more in depth. Yeah. About it. Well, well it's it's All right. both of you lovely people. Uh, yeah. You're amazing, David, please come back. We'll talk some more. Yeah, man. Uh, and I want to, I want to talk, this... talk to you more, man. It's so fun to, to hang out with you. I haven't seen you in a million years and uh, I, I love just kicking around uh real Hollywood bullshit like this. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm the K. Oh, uh, do I have oh. stories? <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Well, thank you. See Thanks, you David. Peace All right. Uh, oh my gosh. What a, what a, what a pleasure. What a blast. And I, <laughs> I didn't mean to keep our next guest waiting, uh, in there. I, so I want to bring them out uh, right now, Rob, I know, uh, I'm very much a big NBA fan. Uh, and, you know, I, yeah. I, I, the reason, uh, I don't watch that much of the NBA is because, uh, I auditioned, you know, I tried out for the NBA and I didn't get it. So, well, uh, I mean, well, I want to, well, I do want to talk about one thing that you are in the NBA, I believe in the NBA with, and you can't, that doesn't really work out that <laughs> that's way, true, but that's true, that's I do want to, I do want to ask about this as it comes up, but, uh, these are the, uh, these are the hosts of the Dunktown podcast. One of my, uh, great podcasts about, uh, basketball, uh, please welcome Agata and Anastasia. Here they are. Come on. Hey, welcome. Hey. Welcome. Hey. hey. Hi, Paul. Hi, Rob. Hey. How are you guys? How are you? Hi. Good. Good. Um, I'm so excited that you both are here because we are in NBA finals time. This is All it. Right. We've, this is the culmination of the season. And I know when you and I first kind of met when we both all kind of sat down and talked like you were you've been on this journey this basketball journey like wh where are you now you've seen so much since uh, you know I, I feel like you've lived through many interesting basketball worlds here with the bubble and now back in and all this sort of stuff how have you been enjoying the season like what's been going on for you too it was up and down because yeah we, <laughs> we kind of boycotted a lot of this season actually because we felt like they were being really unsafe um yeah but once, you know, we got closer to the finals and more people were being vaccinated, uh, we got back into it and we're super excited. We Neither of us had ever been to playoff games before, but now we've been to a couple, which is really exciting. It's a fun energy. I brought my son to uh, his first ever playoff games and I watched him turn into like a wild man. Like there's something <laughs> about like the energy there that like, it is like, it's okay to be like <laughs> jumping up and banging inflatable bats or whatever it is. Like I, I, I watch my son yell and taunt players. Like he's like, you got nothing, Jamal. You got nothing. I think I and heard then, him. Yeah. <laughs> and then he came back in the car. We were sitting in the car and he said to me, he's like, dad, I, I regret some of the things I said to me. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right. Yeah, um, we went we went to two um two of the games from the last series and the one of them we sat at, yeah, Clipper Suns and we went one of them we sat at the very top of the Staples Center so you know you're like 3 miles away from the game. Yeah. Um and surrounded by Suns fans and Lakers fans. 
And then, <laughs> and then the other one we got, we had really nice seats. So we were like very close to the court. It was amazing. Um, I mean, it was, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. But there, was, I, there were people yeah. saying horrific things That's in both true. scenarios because <laughs> when we were surrounded by Lakers fans, they were just saying horrible stuff to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They just they they pay money to go and and harass to ridicule. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They literally wait like they wait until the Clippers lose to then attack them on the way out. Like yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Like you're spending good money and it, uh, to just right. be there to hopefully catch a loss so you could like drill it into them. <laughs> I Paul, wonder. Sorry, go ahead. No, oh, no I was just, just gonna say when that. we when we were down and when we were down and lower, like then we could people were screaming at the players and the players were responding because they're like <laughs> <laughs> you're close enough that they can hear you. Yeah, that, it, it's, was, it's a was, wild was thing. The, was the NBA the first like pro sport to come back with full on people? Like, because I, I remember like no. whatever a month ago or a couple months ago, I was watching TV and I flipped through and I was like. It was terrifying. Like, you know, my brain wasn't used to seeing real people there in the stadium. And like all of a sudden I felt like, oh, my God, like like sports is back or whatever. But I couldn't tell if the NBA was the first the first group to they do might that. They might have or... been the last, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah? they were more conservative. indoors and yeah, yeah, yeah. The baseball and football, they did. They never work. stopped. They were just like, they we're going to keep going. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baseball definitely jumped in. I think the thing that I was most concerned about that really didn't make any sense to me was you would go like the Clippers would go play the Dallas Mavericks or the Utah jazz in a full stadium. Like it was, it was packed as much as they could pack it. And then they would come back to LA and it's like, well, we're not up to snuff yet. <laughs> like, so it was like, wait, hold on. Like, like, so like, like what's the guarantee or like, it was just a weird thing. Like some stadiums were fully packed and other stadiums were like, no, 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 not, we're not ready for it yet. And yeah. it just, it feel like the people that were really going to get the bum end of that deal ultimately are, are the players. Like they, like it's, you know, it didn't seem like fair players yeah. right. out there. Yeah. And the, the bubble was so much fun. I, we had such a good time following that. And then yeah. after that, it was like free for all, like we're but, doing whatever. Paul, so what do you, did, do, do you think your son had any pent up, like, lockdown energy and that's why he's just <laughs> going wild. I, I feel like that's happening a lot. I, I, I definitely believe there's a lot of pent up uh, uh, locked energy, but I also feel like very rarely are kids allowed to like mix it up. Like uh, I, I think I may have told you this, Rob, but like there was one game where the chant started. It was like, ref, you suck. Ref, you suck. And then my kids are like, ref, you suck. He's never said the word suck. I don't even think he knows what the word suck means. And then I was like, watching him and I didn't want to stop him from saying it because the whole you know the whole stadium is chanting it I don't want to take it away from him but like there was this energy where it's like I can do it all I can scream <laughs> like it's like I can be bad like I think there was yeah, like I yeah. think with him it was like the the <laughs> floodgates are open and I'm fine the minute he said suck at home it was not a good deal my wife <laughs> and, and you you let him you let him drink a lot of the games right like you're always giving him <laughs> margarita bud bud yeah. light seltzer only because <laughs> okay. it had it's first of all it's it's light it's yeah. refreshing and yeah. it doesn't have that much alcohol. <laughs> and it tastes good. Yeah. yeah. So, I want to ask you all this because I was talking about this when Rob uh, was not uh, here for one week. And I thought that you two would be perfect for this as well. So my son, uh, besides being obsessed with basketball, is also obsessed with cuteness. And I know that you mm -hmm. two have a little bit of a, uh, of a cuteness thing uh, going on on, you know, talking about different players mm -hmm. and stuff. And so the the. Um, the, the players that we were talking about the last time, I'm going to just cue this up. My my mouse is uh, running out of batteries as the show is going on. So I'm just getting, there we go. Hold on. Ah, it's so, uh, this is so, let me see. I'm going to get it. One, two, three. Okay. So he he was talking about these guys. I'm going to, sorry, I'm just queuing this all up. All right. So he was talking about these two. Uh, Mike, can you bring it in for a second? All right. This is, uh, all right. So he was talking about who's cuter, Jamal Ooh. Murray or bull bull and we got into a very big conversation with everybody but i wanted to get you know you all weren't there all three of you so i wanted to see what if you all had any opinions on this who do you think yeah. is cuter you know uh you know bull bull or jamal murray this okay. is hard bull bull yeah. has that smile mm. that's, no uh mm. but jamal so we are a, we are also obsessed with cuteness 
uh, yeah. and, th- and talk about this all the time. And we talk about Jamal Murray quite often, actually. Um, he, especially in the bubble, he had so much emotion. He was very, um, he showed up in a way that he hadn't yeah. really done before. And he also is just a good looking guy, you know? Yeah. He is a conventionally good looking man, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's nothing, you can't take anything away from that. But yeah. Bol Bol has something that I think is a little bit more endearing, I think. I mean, he's got that X factor for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to thank you for bringing in the experts when it comes yeah. to basketball cuteness. Yeah. <laughs> that is what we do on our show every week. Um, and, and like Anastasia said, Jamal Murray has come up many times. Uh, he's a beautiful man. I'd say I, I don't love the beard on him. I would say I, I like him more clean shaven. Sure. Okay. But... Um, you know, he's the kind of player that will take your breath away at the free throw line. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, you got, all right. So you guys are going, I, it seems like pretty much bowl bowl is where you both, I mean, sort of Jamal Murray is where you both are. Rob, do you have a, a, way, a weighing in on this at all? I, yeah. I mean, I've been very outspoken about this. I'm a bowl bowl guy. Uh, I think everybody, <laughs> everybody knows that about me. Uh, no, I'm just being just to be different. Yeah. Um, I don't know uh, a lot of basketball players in th- I have a very dumb question is Bol Bol related to uh, Manu? Manu-, Manu- yes. yes. Okay. It's this son. is his son. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, because I feel like I saw Manute Bol play a million years ago. I think I went to yeah. see him live and uh, and it was like amazing to watch someone like of that body shape and size. Like I had never seen, you know, cause like, I feel like when he got into the, and this is a million years ago, but when he was in the league, people were like, Oh, I've never seen anyone that tall before in my whole life. You know? Right. Um, I think one, one sort of check in Bull Bull's cuteness column was uh draft night. He mm. was slated pretty high in the draft and he didn't get drafted. I think until the second round, and it was heartbreaking, like mm-hmm. his little face watching it fall as the draft went on. <laughs> and it was, I, it really endeared me to him because he just was, he really was like wearing his emotions on his sleeve, you know? <laughs> well, it's like, it's a very vulnerable moment. You're mm-hmm. watching somebody pick teams. It's like what we all have grown up with, you know, like a, a, we're at a, a public school or whatever you're like you can pick for the kickball team and no one's picking you and you're in there and you're in your nice little suit and uh you know and it, it's an your upsetting mom's there. Moment. Yeah. yeah i mean it's you know um but i but i wanted to kind of because the chat and i we all were bobo uh so uh mm-hmm. that's what we decided then but i figured we should bring it back we should make it final specific it's the bucks and the Suns. Mm-hmm. and i asked my son tonight i said what is who are you interested in in the debate of cuteness and we went back and forth about it because he's got a lot he's always asked me who's cuter and and uh, so he came up with this uh this pairing so i'm gonna show it to you right here um i could pop that up there for a sec all right so here is our new cuteness uh ooh, is it deandre ooh. ayton uh yeah, on the yeah, suns yeah, or is yeah. it giannis ooh, uh yeah. from the bucks i mean two very cute guys uh you know so i wanted to just kind of get the conversation started on the so yeah, that's, that's I, very hard for me. I have to say, first of all, I'm in Phoenix right now. I'm at my dad's house. I'm from wow. Arizona. I went to game one of the finals. Uh, I'm a Whoa. big Suns fan. I love Aiton. Um, he he's the kind of guy he when he was drafted, uh, I think his first and second year, he wasn't really like um, aggressive enough. And everyone's right. like trying to get him to be more aggressive, and he just like couldn't. And I just think that's so sweet <laughs> 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 that he just like couldn't be aggressive. And now he's doing great. And I think because of Chris Paul, you know, and he said some really sweet words about Chris Paul's leadership. But then Giannis is Giannis. I mean, that might be Agata. What do you think? One of the I mean, I, our cuties. Yeah, Giannis has got to be like top three cuties. We. <laughs> In the whole league, in the whole league, because he he has an amazing backstory. Um, he grew up like living in a tiny little apartment with his entire family in Greece, um, and then he came over to the U.S. 
and he tweeted my favorite thing in the world, which is, he said, I just tried for the first time a smoothie, God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> And, he, and there's this famous story about how he had to get, he had to hitchhike a ride to his NBA game because wow. he had been sending his money back to his family in Greece. Whoa. So he couldn't afford wow. to get a, car, a cab. So. Well, yeah. you know, the same thing happened to Paul. I don't know if you guys know this story, but Paul was going to tell them the story, Paul. He was Paul. Paul was going wow. to a game <laughs> and his car broke down and he yes. or and he forced his wife to come and get the car so he could go to the game. My wife volunteered that to me. It was games. It was it was game six of the Clipper Sun series. We were playing oh with house God. money. I I had hopes, but I also felt like that might be the last game of the series. I wanted to be there. I didn't want to miss it. And June came to the car and literally just got out and said, "I'm making a decision for you." I'm taking care of this, get in an Uber and go to the game. And it was, that is, it wow. was she that's knew amazing. that that's where I wanted to be. And by the way, she wanted to go to that game with me very much, but I had promised to a Suns fan because a Suns fan took me to game two of the Western conference finals and oh, going wow. to that stadium was unbelievable. It was so much fun. I had already bought tickets for game seven. If it was going to happen in Phoenix, I loved, I love that energy and I love that stadium. It was great. But uh, but but my wife was so entertaining that a she couldn't go. I had to take a Suns fan, which was already <laughs> nerve wracking. And then and then uh, so she she just was the full package. I I do want to get into who your top three cuties are. Like who who is the Mount Rushmore of current NBA cuties? Okay, okay. I mean, I want to preface this by saying <laughs> we we don't just take looks into account. It's got to be okay. a full package. Like, yeah, I like that. Personality, good teammate. Do they donate yes. to charity? You know, wow. That kind of stuff. Oh, so like, you'll do like research on these guys? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like okay. it's yeah, exactly. And looks like only it. doesn't get you very far, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like that. You're looking for somebody who's really going to be, uh, you know, the long, the long term love. Like it's not, yeah. it's not just like exactly. it's just not a one night stand. Yeah. Yeah. You know, someone we talked about, we've we've talked about forever, is Bradley Beal. Um, mm. He's a great player, very handsome guy, uh, also very active with DC area charities, and recently Greg Popovich, because he's on the the USA team. Yeah. Greg Popovich called him thick. And I think it's thick with two C's. Wow. Wow. All right. I like this. <laughs> so, well, I, I don't know what he was trying to, what message he was trying to get across. But. Yeah. I mean, I think he was just saying, wow, I was really impressed with Bradley Beal. I've never really seen him play this well. And he's thick. Yeah. Uh, so Pop Popovich really sure. has been saying, some very thirsty things about mm -hmm. all the team USA guys. Like he's like, I begged Kevin Durant. I was like, if you're not going to come, I'm not going to do like he's, he is thirsting <laughs> after these players in a way that I love. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, LeBron's got to be on the Re Mount Rushmore. Okay. I mean, yeah. okay. He's done more for the sport than any other player. I don't think anyone can argue that. Um, like he, I think also like he built a whole school. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And he, yes, and he cares about the beautiful. WNBA, which is a big deal to us. We want, yeah. you know, yeah. a lot of sports fans, <laughs> you know, completely ignore it or think it doesn't matter. And he he brings a lot of spotlight to it, which is amazing. Um, Damian Lillard also got to be on there. I like it. Like Great. this is a good group of cuties. Does Damian yeah. Lillard do enough charity stuff? I don't know. I mean, I. I can't think of anything. I may have stumped you. I may have stumped. Yeah. That I, don't, I know I don't, he's a good teammate. He's I don't want to throw too I don't want to I don't want to throw too much of a curveball in here uh or try to like, you know, force my way onto the list or anything, but <laughs> I I actually played a coach in NBA 2K19, which is oh a yes. video game. God. You did? And uh, yes. yeah, I got to be a, a coach of uh of one of the teams. And again, so cool. uh, you know, I'm not trying to force my way onto the <laughs> Mount Rushmore, but I would say open up the, uh -huh. you know, open up the your your consideration to all, you know, not just um, 
players, but also coaches and, and other characters in the video game. You know, yeah. I want to I want to show people you, Rob, in NBA 2K. I have a I have a picture here because I knew we we're gonna get into it a little bit. So uh, let me. I'm just gonna pull this up here. There, there you are. Uh, wow. There I am. Wow. Coach the, of the, the coach yeah. of the mad ants. Yep. <laughs> and that's you coaching uh, Kumail. Right. Uh, that's right. Kumail was on. Uh, Kum I think. Kum wait. Um, I think Kumail might have been another coach. I don't think I coached okay. him. Yeah. Because okay. all my guys were like legit players and stuff. Yeah. There you are. Uh, wow. there you, yeah. You, get, you yeah. are really in there. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and you uh, have the best gig. It really is. Like to be in an NBA 2K is like, I mean. <laughs> I don't think they knew that I didn't know anything about <laughs> basketball, like anything like it was it was so fun because, you know, they they sort of set up these interstitial scenes, you know, that go between the games. And I was just like a weirdo coach that would like yell at the players and make crazy scene, you know, like just all sorts of weird claims about stuff. And, you know, they would, they would use whatever they wanted and then they would edit out stuff that was too weird. So uh, wait, I were you like improv it? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Wow. I, the, the guy that directed it is a friend of mine and I'd done a movie for the, for him, uh, like a legit movie. And then he went on to do this video game. He was like, Oh, you should come up to Silicon Valley. We're going to do this thing. I was like, yeah, I'll come up there. <laughs> And, um, you know, when they shoot it, it's, you know, you're covered in the ping pong balls and then you have like this camera rig, like right in front of your face that just films you the whole. So they just shoot for hours and hours and hours. And uh, it was a blast. Like it was super fun. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, for our list of cutie coaches, there you I go. Mean, you're definitely up oh, there. Yes. All right, also, See? Idris Elba played a coach in That's NBA true. 2K, so oh, yes. he's got to be on that list too. <laughs> oh man! See, here we go. Me and Idris. <laughs> yeah, it's you, it. then yeah. Idris, then Idris. That makes sense. That checks then, out. Like, that's Monty. a fine. That's a pretty <laughs> solid list. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, I like that. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, and we do have to shout out Kelly Oubre who is just have the, to the most beautiful player in the league by far <laughs> oh, I know we said it's not just enough. looks but well I mean also he recently did a CarMax commercial that is so mm -hmm. cute and funny. yeah <laughs> we're really hoping he like transitions into acting and A24 yeah puts yeah I want to see him cool in like indie. a gritty yeah like, I like I like good. this I I like all this uh, this uh, I I think it's it's an important factor like we look at these people as you know uh, amazing athletes but very rarely do we get to acknowledge their cuteness and 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 the softer side of them because I think there is something about the sport of basketball that allows them to be a little bit cuter I don't know what it is I think there's there's a there's a there's a there's a looseness to it. There's a, yeah. they goof around with each other. Like I, I love it. Like when Terrence Mann scored 41 points and they all went in the locker room, a lot of dancing, a lot of fun. It just seems like, Hey, we're they're They're not afraid to cry. Jamal Murray in the bubble was uh, his speeches after the, the games with his Brianna Taylor shoes. It yeah. was amazing. Like it was, it was very emotional. I feel like those players can get there. Even Paul George having like a mental breakdown. It's like, Hey, he's allowing himself to opening himself up to, bringing mental health to the forefront here yes I love for that. sure yeah we love when we love when players talk about mental health kevin love is a big one he's always yes he's always talking about it and you're right they do have the opportunity to like kind of open up a bit more i mean i think there's a lot of toxic masculinity that still takes over everything but you get those little glimpses of like emotion and like realness and that that's so much fun to watch mm -hmm. i feel like there's a lot of toxic masculinity whenever paul's son goes to the game <laughs> <laughs> you know he is uh -oh. very aggressive very <laughs> aggressive i will say um it was uh when when the clippers lost um i they were losing it was in the fourth quarter they kind of just given up at that point um and i get a facetime from my wife and I'm like, oh, something must be wrong. And she was calling me because my son had collapsed on the floor in tears. Oh. And he was so upset that the Clippers oh, had no. lost. And I kind of prepared him like that we were playing with house money at this point, And we didn't have quiet and didn't have surge and I didn't have zoo. And I said to him, I go, you know, and he's on the floor crying. And he just looks at me with the camera. He goes, why can't I control these emotions? Oh, and oh my God. <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. And I said, you don't have to, you don't have to just embrace them. We'll, we'll get through them and we can, you know, we could, we could do this. Um, 
I, I, you know, your podcast is amazing. It's the Dunktown podcast. People Thank can follow you. you on Instagram and on Twitter, but I wanted to see, I, I know this is not exactly what you do, but, uh, do we have any, do we have any, uh, you know, do you have a, a pick? I mean, obviously we know that, you know, Phoenix is holding a, a place in one of your hearts, but I mean, but like, what do we think, what do we think is going to happen here? Are we a sons and four, uh, you know, are you on the same page? What, what do you, what are you thinking here for this, for this finals? I want yeah. it to be a long series, first of all. Yes. I, I don't want, I hate sweeps. I want Me them too. both to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Get in yeah. there. Play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I definitely, you know, it's really hard because I think the Bucks really deserve it, but I just, I want the Suns to win. I can't help it. I got to go with my heart. Um, I would love to see Giannis get a, a championship, but, you know. I, you got to support the Suns. I hear you. They're very know. good. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're both franchises that are deserving. They are both like great stories behind the whole thing. Whether it's the story of Chris Paul or the story of uh, of um, Monty, the story of you know uh, Giannis. Like, there's so much going on there. The only story I don't like is Coach Bud. I, I don't feel like but Coach Bud. He's the only person I don't really. I feel like he's the only one that's kind of blowing it in my yeah, opinion. For sure. Uh, for sure. Um, I I want the Suns to win too, but I also I'm not I'm not that I don't feel that strongly about it. I I would love to see Giannis win. I think he would be so happy and probably yeah. cry all over yeah. <laughs> well right now <laughs> uh, for people who are watching this the sun uh, the uh the the bucks are up 23 20 wow. game two in phoenix we appreciate you both here it's so great to have you Thank i you love too. your podcast yeah, yes. follow them listen to them it is great i'm glad that we got to talk cuties and uh, and all this sort of stuff before and the next season is over this is great thank you so much Next season, please keep your eyes on the Mad Ants. We are up and coming. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of great talent, and uh, we're gonna do it. So, and and just so you know, uh, Giannis was voted the uh, was the voted the cutest by our chat. Oh. Uh, Eighty wow. percent of the wow. votes said that Giannis uh, is over Aiton, uh, which you know, look, teach their own. But that's a pretty solid one. Whereas Bull Bull. And Jamal Murray was a real 50-50. And I think <laughs> Bull Bull just kind of got about 52%. Uh, percent, and I think it was 48. So there we go. But Rob, you are still, I mean, you're leading right now with the, the coach poll right now. You're oh, at great. Oh, that's yeah, great. So that's okay, really that great. makes me feel better. That makes me feel good. <laughs> well, thank you so right. much for having us. Thanks so yeah, much. Nice to meet you guys. All right. Bye-bye. See, See you later. later. All right. What a oh, show, you, man. Oh, uh, you drop you drop people so mercilessly. Out, you out, edit out. Is there people like to say goodbye? They like to say thank you, you know, or you know, hey, your lighting looks great or something. Bye. You just go like snorf and you bow. You, you get them out. Man. Check them out. Um, man alive. I'm still kind of taking in David and how real that was. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, you never know what kind of um, headspace people are in or where people are coming from exactly. I haven't seen Crumholtz in a long time. Like, um, he, the last time I saw him, he was somewhere out here in LA. And so that was, um, that was pretty, pretty funny, pretty wild to see him like, uh, yeah, wide open like that. But look, I um, get it, man. Like, this is a, this is a rough business. And I think he is probably just, he sounded like he might be a little freaked out after the pandemic or whatever, but now he's on that show. I wanted to fucking be on white house plumbers. That's going to be a super me cool. too. Yeah. It's like the, you know, it's the story of the fucking Watergate break in and all that's going to be super cool. They're all in like cool, great, you know, cast, period, amazing period people. clothing. Yeah. And yeah it's going to be awesome. Um, did I tell you my most embarrassed? I mean, talking about uh, embarrassing auditions, I wanted to tell this to David. I, so M Knight has a new movie out called Old. I don't know if you've seen the trailer for Sorry, it. Sorry, when you say the name, I don't know uh who you're referring to. M Knight, you got to say the last name just so I know who it is. M Knight Shyamalan. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, you I know, I just call him M Knight. I just call him okay. M Knight, you know. And so M Knight first, uh, Are you on a first name or I'm on a middle name basis. Initial with and then the middle yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I sometimes I'll call you uh you know, I'll call you R R R yeah, R <laughs> <laughs> uh but he uh so there's this movie that's called old if you drive around town at least in la the posters look like a really shitty fox reality show it's just it's a terrible poster um but the premise of it is um there's a hotel on an island and when you go to this beach you age so like uh, a family goes with their very young kids and the kids like 
go into a cave and then they come out like a minute later and they're like teenagers yeah. and they're like mom mom and of course i cried when i saw that trailer i mean i, I can't take that kind of shit uh you know sorry like, you sorry so you you cried because of the idea of kids growing up yeah i mean if my kids growing walked up into a very cave, quickly girl if my kids walked into a cave and came out as teens i would freak the fuck out like i yeah. like i got and me on you, some and emotional you were level. able you were able to while watching this trailer you were able to identify with that possibility so emotionally that you actually Got I mean, outside. don't you? I mean, I'm crying. I'm crying so much more since I had kids these last oh, seven yeah, years. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You put but on a commercial. You know, you, you, but yeah. you know that there are no caves where you walk into them and you age rapidly. You, do, you I, do, do I know you, that? Do I know that? Well, I, I hope mean, there you, isn't. There are vortexes. I, I, <laughs> I mean, we just yeah. got to a vortex where no one <laughs> slept. I don't know, Rob. I don't know. Uh, but so I... So during the pandemic, I got an audition for an M night movie and it was very secretive and the sides mm -hmm. were incredibly locked off and it was, you know, and, and it's a very, it was, they were very tricky sides. They were just like, well, I think the polarity of the magnetism means that if we come back here in seven hours, we'll reverse the process. Like I had no idea I was giving gobbledygook, but I didn't even understand the yeah. premise of the gobbledygook. Yeah. So um, I auditioned for it. I do it by myself because I don't even want to want to bother my wife. So I set up my camera on a tripod. I do all the lines, and uh, and I get a call back, and they go, "Hey, um, they liked your audition. They want you to read for this part." And I was like, "Oh, maybe it's a a bigger part." And no, it's not a bigger part. It's a much, much, much <laughs> smaller part of hotel clerk, right? So <laughs> then I get hotel clerk and hotel clerk is like this. He's like, uh, like he goes over to the family. He's like, oh, hello, uh, Mr. Anderson. Um, just want to let you know that the bus is leaving at noon. And if you want, uh, we can take the whole family with you and you'll return at five. Like nothing, no acting, yeah. no anything, just like information. And I don't get that. I don't get that part. And I was like, motherfucker. I was like, how, first of all, they want to bring me back for a smaller part. And then that smaller part, I didn't ace in any way that I was like, it was just humiliating. Like when you, these things that you audition for, sometimes you just you, you're like, oh, you're just like, oh man, why, yeah. what happened? What happened there? And that really, uh, crushed yeah, me, my, but I know, you know, one of, one of my worst ones that I, I love to talk about was, um, one of the diehards, uh, like the most recent diehard, you know, which was like 10 years ago or something. Yeah. And I went in to audition for a part and it was, it was seriously, this was the name of the character, pasty faced, wait, pasty face hacker. So I was a hacker, but I don't know why it was important that I was not tan or, or <laughs> anything. And I am a little fair skinned. I'll give them that. But the fact that like my agency immediately thought of me for the pasty face hacker. <laughs> so I went in and um, all of the dialogue, you know, that I had to memorize was like me trying to hack in. It's like, can you get in? No, there's a firewall. Can you get through it? Give me a second guys. Hold on. Okay. I'm in, you know, that kind of thing. And in the middle of the audition, the chair that I was sitting on, it was made of wood shattered and broke and i fell down like all the way you know on just disintegrated i don't know whether i was too uh. fat or whatever i just crushed this chair and so i didn't know what to do and i just kept going with the audition i i improvised the line uh something like uh damn it john mcclain has rigged all of our chairs to blow you know and uh. they were they were like so shocked at what had happened and that I kept going with it. So they were like, Oh my God, that was hilarious. They were like crying, laughing. Cause I look like an idiot. So I thought, Oh, well, I definitely got, got the part role. of yeah. pasty face pasty hacker. Face hacker. put that on the old reel. Didn't get it. Never heard. Nope. Of, never heard. Of and it's like, what, what has gone on to make you not get it? I mean, I, I, have you even been auditioning at all recently and anything you've been working on or doing anything? Yeah. Just, you know, self tape stuff, you know, like not right, yeah. going, not going in person, but just putting myself on tape and stuff. But, um, you know, you're getting it like on your email and stuff like that. You're just, like, people are sending you stuff. 
Um, yeah, you know, the way it works is, uh, your agents will email you. Well, how do they do it to you? They send you a letter through the mail and you get, I get, the, yeah, I get, uh, I get you a get carrier like a hard pigeon. Copy. Yeah. It says, yeah, hey, get, Paul, yeah. would you like to audition for this thing? And then I'll uh, check yes for yes or no for no. And then I'll check that and then I'll send it back. And then my agents will then say, okay, great. Uh, here's some sides and I get them. It's a very yeah. long process. Yeah. I usually, I usually get on email. Let me, I actually, there's an email address that I haven't checked now that you say that I'm kind of freaking yeah. out because, yeah. uh, I, as you know, I used to use my hotmail address and you used to always you make fun of me for that. Yeah. And I haven't had checked my, for too long. Yeah. I haven't used my hotmail in a long time and I should check it because sometimes they email. Oh, fuck. Fuck. What? what oh my gosh. I'm so glad you mentioned this, Paul. Oh wait, what? Yeah, I got an audition right now. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Got you got an audition. One. All right. I yeah. All right. What, yeah. Um, is there a way, can I ask you a favor? Because yeah. I don't, I don't recognize the title of the movie, but I do want to go ahead and put myself on tape for this. Do you mind is there oh, yeah, a way just, to, for me to do it? And can you make me bigger? And uh, maybe, of course we'll, we'll, we'll do it like the, uh, the impressions, you know, just we'll, kind of, you know, get you, you can kind of record, record me. I'm going to, I'm going to record right now. Yeah. Great. And, um, so we'll, I'll send this in and we'll do like a, a self tape situation. Great. So Go me, for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I'm so glad you mentioned this because I never checked this email. I haven't checked this email in years and here we go. Oh, this is God. a good one. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm ready if you are. And um, okay, great. Let me go ahead and slate. And I, I will ask you, Paul, to not talk during this uh, because it does it does you know sort of throw it off. So I won't um, say a so word. I'm going to be here. I'll be watching, and that's okay. what you got that for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to slate and then go straight into it. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Rob Hubel. I'm based in Los Angeles, California. I'm six two. There's my profile, and uh, they like they like it when you do profile from both sides. So uh, we'll edit that part out. But I'm telling the audience that's watching this, you do a profile. <clears throat> You're so ambitious, aren't you? You know what you look like to me with your good bag and your cheap shoes. You look like a rube, a well scrubbed hustling rube with a little taste. Good nutrition's given you some length of bone, but you're not more than one generation from poor white trash, are you, Agent Starling? And that accent you've tried so desperately to shed, pure West Virginia. What does your father do? Is he a coal miner? Does he stink of the lamp? You know how quickly the boys found you. All those tedious, sticky fumblings in the back seats of cars while you could only dream of getting out, getting anywhere, getting all the way to the F-B-I. And scene. Thank all right, you. Well, I, just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to interrupt because you told me not to. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, do we get well, it? First of all, do, no, do we get it? We got, we got, we got it all. Oh, I got the, yeah. I got the profiles and everything. I edited oh, that stuff out when you were yeah. talking about it. Um, I just, you said you hadn't opened this email in a, in a long time. I just don't right? ever check my hotmail. I haven't checked it in so long, but that one was, uh, yeah, that one was from a little while ago, but if you'll send me that file, I'll go ahead and email it to my agents uh, and we'll send uh, it in. I gladly do that. I just want to say that I did recognize it from the movie Silence of the Lambs. Oh, let the me check. Jodie Foster, uh, Anthony. Oh, that Hunter. is the name of the, the name of the movie is Silence of the Lambs. So yeah, I guess it's a, a Is it a project. remake? A what? No, it's the... Jonathan Demi directing. Yeah, is that, Jonathan is, Demi is directing well, it. Jody, he's passed. Jody Foster is attached. Yeah, well, he's passed. Uh, Anthony and Hopkins is attached. Wait, Anthony Hopkins. Wait, because you were reading the Anthony Hopkins. So Anthony Hopkins. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. Anthony Hopkins is not attached. He was attached. He dropped out. So oh. I guess I'm reading to replace him. I, I, I don't I, know. I think, check the date. Check the date on that, please, because I think it's a little. I think. I mean, look, it was. A brilliant audition. I mean, I really, thank I was you. there. You know, thank I really you. liked it. Oh, thank you. The feedback I, is so great to get because you don't ever get feedback on the audition, so that is nice to no. hear. I but, mean, so I, what? Is, what is it you're saying? You're suggesting that have you ever you, seen the movie you, Silence of the Lambs? It hasn't been made yet that I'm aware of. Uh, no, Silence of the Lambs was actually made in 1991. 1991. Oh, I do see now. This yeah, is, this is an old, older email. It is older. Yeah, that that is going to be. I think mm. 
uh, as someone in the uh, as it wandering is, frog guess, has I mentioned guess. they may have went a different way with that part yeah oh um okay yeah, people well, are saying won a bunch of anyway Emmys. the point uh, the Oscar. point is is that you asked do i get a lot of auditions the uh, the answer is yes i do get a lot of auditions this is one example where maybe this ship has sailed okay. i would like to i would like to suggest if they do want to go a different route and sometimes have you ever heard of cgi what they'll do is uh rotoscope out the original actor's face and they'll put in a better actor a younger actor they don't uh, normally do that they don't reverse do that they sometimes will do that like if someone has passed or they have to you know do, I don't know why you know what? you're not my agent so of course I, not uh, so I'll hear this from my agent you know okay and, okay um, all right if you I, want I, I'd I'll, like to I'll say good you. luck to good luck to all the actors out there that are auditioning for movies and, okay um, yeah but I do audition for a lot of them I'm currently available um okay. and I also right. just to go back to this I also oh, am now um I'm developing a movie based on my colorblind character uh, who puts oh, on the no. glasses Fuck, Steve. Why didn't you just fuck? How much were these? 200 bucks? You couldn't have gotten these a long time ago? And, oh, this is amazing. Thank well, you. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're going to be bringing that character back, I, I would like to show you uh, kind of the continuation of my character. Uh, now I'll be playing the uh, cyber investigator who comes in. Uh, so it just goes like this. Yeah, this guy uh, hung himself. <laughs> Sorry, son of a bitch. Didn't even jerk off before he did it. Let's see what his last thing was. Fireworks video on Instagram. <laughs> this guy deserved to die. All right. Who wants grilled cheeses? Wait, wait, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt the audition. Yeah. Were you auditioning for your own project? Uh, no, I was kind of showing you like a, oh, you're giving a, me a little taste of it's kind of like a, uh, they call it an active, a trailer. So where the actor will your... just kind of do a scene. So in your project, um, the main character hangs himself mm -hmm. and then a uh, like a CSI type detective comes in to sort of go through his social media and look at all of his mm -hmm. uh, his online presence. Yeah. And that's what you were just doing. Yeah. I uh, to me, what's going to be fun about it is the audience is going to be taken for a real twist. Uh, because we do start off at the 4th of July with a great guy taking pictures of fireworks and he uploads them and he's upset. He kills himself. Yeah. CSI yeah. investigator comes in. He realizes immediately what went on. And then we start to follow that CSI investigator and his life. And it becomes um, kind of a funny story about uh, Mr. Mom kind of a thing because he's a CSI investigator. But his wife, uh, she breaks her back. And then he has to be the mom of the house, but he's used to being a CSI investigator. But that's the opening, that's the what cold open the, of the movie. Uh, I'm a little bit confused by yeah. some of the plot details. What was the part about the grilled cheese? Why was everybody so excited about uh, let's go get grilled cheeses? Or because I think what we want to show is like, this is a guy who can see a dead body and he's like, you know what? Case closed. Let's go get some grilled cheeses. We're, I'm fine with it. But then later on in the movie, when one of the kids like vomits in the car, he's like, ew, ew. And it's like that's the funny, that's the funny, that's the joke stuff. Like okay. the funny, the thing is like, oh, this guy can look at a dead body. And he's like, let's go get grilled cheeses. But then like his kid like sharts in the car, and it's like, oh, yucky, I don't touch poopy, you know. And it's like, oh. and yeah, so that's kind of the fun stuff. And it's called, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's it, well, it has a couple of different names because we were trying to get like, like DSI, like dad scene investigator, but we, that doesn't really funny. make sense, you know. Like we're trying that. to figure out some some sort of like NCIS or CSI pun with the word dad in it. A lot of people in the chat keep mentioning um, my sort of ongoing thing with young Sheldon, you know, um, several weeks yeah. ago uh, I did audition on this show for yes. young, for the young Sheldon franchise. So great. That was great. Obviously, obviously the, uh, I the YS, it. The YSCU, right? The Young Sheldon Cinematic Universe. You were definitely yeah. auditioning for a character. Man. I auditioned for it. I did not get it. I did hear that you, I think, got... Um, did, did you get my part? I'm trying to I remember. did get your part. I did get your part. Yeah. I think it was just because I was, you know, I just came in. I was, I, I, I kind of was figuring out how to play that meth teacher because you were kind of auditioning with all these extra lines about the meth and I just kind of just had to go like, Young Sheldon? Yeah. You know, yeah, that was yeah. a, yeah. So what was it like to work with Young Sheldon? I never got to talk to you about that. It was very private. 
he's very private, young Sheldon, mm -hmm. like in a, um, uh, like didn't want to hang out in between takes. No, no, he didn't, didn't want to reveal a lot. Oh, okay. But, but would not told... want me to not would, would not want me to share it. Oh, I see. So he, uh, the actor who plays young Sheldon, or, or I don't even know, is that his real name is young Sheldon? I'm sorry. I no, don't even know. it's not, but I wouldn't share his real name with you. Okay. Well, I could easily look it up on, I could, I could Google could. it in one second. I could Google no, it. No, he's got, a, he's got a Hollywood, a fake Hollywood name. I know his real name. <sighs> All right. So regardless, you got yeah. to work with young Sheldon. I, I think it's irregardless. It's not irregardless. That's not okay. a word. Uh, so you got to work with young Sheldon. He opened mm -hmm. up a lot to you, but you won't share anything because you say he's box. very private. Yeah. I'm a lockbox. When, when, when big time celebrities share with me, their hair transplant stories or their stories where wait 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 young sheldon got a hair transplant because that in uh, in and of itself we were just talking to david crumholtz about his uh struggle and his decision about whether or not to do that and you didn't even you want to hear some serious you want to hear some serious shit young sure. sheldon is 52 years old are you no way that's not without 52 does he have one of those caves that you were talking about where he goes into the cave and he goes? That's why I was very, when you said they don't exist, oh, I was like, well, geez. he has a reverse cave, a younger this cave. This is crazy. This is crazy. But hey, a I lot do, of it is also plastic surgery. Um, I do have, if we can show that video, I do have a pitch. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted to pitch you a new movie franchise. I know that you are a big fan of Fast and Furious and all of that. Oh, I love it. Something happened in my neighborhood the other day, uh, and this is sort of a ripped from the headlines type of. This is amazing. Thing. Yeah. This is a real video of um, my landscaper, uh, the guy that comes around and like you know does our yard for us every week. Uh, came around yesterday and was like, "Hey, you know, man, I can't, I won't be cutting the grass for the next couple of weeks." And I was like, "Why?" And he showed me this video. And uh, so I think oh, I want to get up. the so Molly, do you have that or you want me to pull it in? Tell me uh, you can. I'm gonna look in the chat because Molly and I are going back and forth because my mouse is. Oh, we got Molly's gonna pop it into the chat here. Okay, and this Actually. is real security cam footage of what happened to uh, my landscaper. Watch this. This van pulls up, and look at these guys. Nice minivan, no by the way. Nice. Oh, wait till you see Whoa. what they do with it. My landscaper has all of his gear there in the back of his pickup truck and it's chained up and these motherfuckers get their bolt cutters in the course of about 30 seconds Whoa. and they go and they cut the fucking chain and steal all of his gear. My guy is behind that gray house, uh, you know, working with a weed whacker or something like that, making people's flowers look great. And these guys are cutting the chain to all of his gear and look at this the, you, would, the, what? You, would, you would think that the mailman would get out and, and say something block him in do anything there no. literally is a, a minivan parked in the by the way great minivan <laughs> in the middle of the street whoa and they load it whoa. up look at this one guy they jump in the getaway driver takes off a little too fast whoa yeah a little too and then they're there. out of there and they're out of there so Whoa. that is how they do it in Hollywood, California. They steal. By the way, uh, yes. In I, broad I, daylight, I, in 4.32 p.m. In broad daylight, they stole uh, my guy's gear. And uh, and literally, my guy was upset about it. I keep calling him my guy. He's not my guy. Daniel is uh, is a great dude. And uh, I couldn't believe that. So, But I, don't I told have, him. I don't have, yeah. He, he sent me the video and I said, uh, I'm going to put it out there on the internet. We're going to get these guys. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, uh, I did. People are asking, yes, I gave him some money to buy a new, a new mower. Of course he deserves it. He's a, he's a great dude. And, um, but, uh, so that made me come up with a new movie franchise, Paul, if you okay. want to help me write this yeah. and I'm still working with the title, but I just want to say one thing to you, Rob, just so I yeah. can be clear. I'm not the driver of that Pacifica. Uh, okay, and, can and we Pacifica go back should... and look at it? Can we, let's yeah, go back and look yeah, at okay. it. Because Pacificas because are not supposed to be kept, you. You kept mentioning it is a good looking uh, what a van. great minivan. You kept saying, uh, yeah. hey, good looking minivan, good looking minivan. And I know yours is not this color. Mm -hmm. uh, at least last time I saw it, it wasn't this color. I uh -huh. wonder if you 
because there's a driver, you know, the, the yeah. windows are tinted and I'm trying mm. now to look and see if this is you. I uh, look, um, I'm just going to say that, look, uh, look, minivans are amazing and whatever you want to use them for, they have a great purpose. Family, uh, lawnmowers, uh, whatever you're going to put in there, it can handle it, it can handle it. And I feel like this is not what we want to use it for, but it does have multi multiple per purposes. But I feel like you would know uh, that a lot of people in LA have these security cams front facing on the street. Yeah. Uh, you could even be in cahoots with the mailman. It's curious to me why the mailman, why he didn't do anything to stop you. Maybe this is- All I'm going to say is, can we get this to go viral? And if so, we can say uh, Pacifica theft. Oh wow! Like maybe we could say like oh, maybe I, maybe like, if you want if you wait get this hold, to go viral, hold on hold on so you're now trying to turn this into a commercial for the Chrysler Pacifica? I mean, look, we have to find we have to make you know lemonades with the lemons that we have. So why don't we say like no matter what your lifestyle, Pacifica is there for you? Or we you know we maybe title the YouTube video like, oh my gosh, look how fast that Pacifica is. I'm just saying it's just a, it's a I great don't know, way man. To... It's just not what I had thought of. You know, when 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 Daniel sent me the video, I said, you know, I'll put it on the internet, I'll show it around LA and worldwide. And if anyone knows yeah. those guys, please, you know, uh uh let me know who I couldn't I can't make okay. it out. You know? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean but, look, but, but like, you're I mean, already I... you're trying to position this to your benefit as I'm just saying if we you know, look wow, look at look how great and how quick that car was with the pickup. Uh, you could put anything in the back, humans, uh, lawnmowers, it can carry bolt cutters, you know, and you didn't, if you want, if you watch the chassis at all, when they do put that lawnmower in there, it doesn't even, it doesn't even buckle or, so or the bend. The towing it, power, yeah. you're pushing the towing power and the yeah. torque and all that stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so I don't want to get into it. By the way, I will tell you this, uh, there is something in the air because, uh, our dog walker, Roxy, who is amazing and she does, uh, a one, uh, once a day walk with meatball. Sergeant Meatball, sorry, I didn't mean to devalue his service. Um, she went to go get a dog. So she basically uh, opens, you know, she she goes to the house, gets the dog and brings it out. In the time that she left her car to go get the dog and bring it out, her car was stolen. What? Stolen right out of the street. And, and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, just immediately like just grabbed. And yeah. uh, we, you know. I mean, I like, well, I tell you what's going around is that everyone is going bananas like every, yeah like they're you know people are it's desperate times people have been out of work for a year and people are and yeah. i'm not like trying to you know whatever but like yeah people are fucking uh ripping each other off it's it's uh, it's, crazy. it's a crazy daytime theft is a, a real like when you see stuff like that you're like wow it's just it, because yeah. it's not you don't even think about it you don't even think about it even though my mom who i just uh helped my mom buy a car uh and by help her buy a car i literally like helped her figure out what to get uh she said don't to tell me, me you gave her a chrysler pacifica don't don't even tell me that i got her a lawnmower <laughs> you got her oh paul now i'm even more suspicious that it was you man because you just stumbled into that. You just accidentally yeah, implicated um, yourself in the crime that you gave. I helped my mom. mom. I helped my mom. I like I said to her, I was like, if you want to get this new vehicle, and and she said yes, I said, all you need to do is use some bolt cutters. And uh yeah, so she but she's having a great time out there. And uh, and if you do need somebody to do your lawn, I'll give you my mom's card. I don't I don't want your mom's car to mow my lawn. I want to get okay. My guy, his lawnmower back. Okay? All right. Well, Daniel knows where to, you know, if he wants it back, he can. <laughs> so what talk. happened? So you helped your mom. Uh, uh, I helped my mom get a car, but my mom, my mom was so funny. Like, not that you have to know anything about Los Angeles or anything, but if I say the word Beverly Hills to you, it probably connotes. I know 210. Yeah. Right. I mean, but like what, like, yeah, it. right. It connotes something to you, right? Even if you're not from here, my mom had to pick up the car from Beverly Hills. And she said to me, I'm not sure about that area. I need to go very early in the morning so I don't get mugged. And I said, in Beverly Hills? And I literally knew where she picked it up from because I know where she was going. It was next to a Mercedes dealership in the, like in the, it couldn't have been more. It, it was not a Mercedes that she got, but uh, it just couldn't have been in more of a safe spot. My mom was going there thinking 
that she was going to be mugged. So she got up at seven in the morning to make sure there was no muggers out there uh, to uh, the Beverly Hills muggers. So uh, if it's getting to my mom, <laughs> can I, can I uh, feel free to say no, and I, yeah. but I'm going to put you on the spot here. Can I say what your mom said she was worried about when she first moved to LA? I think we've said it oh, on the air. Before, we can say I- it on the air. Yeah. My mom won't be watching and we won't cut this as part of any, any clip compilation of this show, but yes, you can. Yeah. When uh, Paul's mom first was moving to LA, you know, she was from New York and um, her uh, husband had passed away within, you know, a few years. Uh, God, God yes. bless him. And uh, she was kind of like, okay, I guess I got to get back into the dating life or whatever. Yes. She told you famously that she was excited to come to LA, but she said, I will not do oral in yes. a car. In a yes. car. In a car. She did not want, she, while she was excited to potentially uh, go on a date or two, she was yeah. not going to, uh, she was not going to slum it. And and do some oral in a car, uh, as as LA, most seventy year old as everyone, yeah. everyone does that in L.A. all the time, especially the older crew, the older the older grouping of people uh, like to you know just handies and BJ's uh, all across L.A. Uh, vehicles all the time. I'm always like walking down the street, hitting cars with a newspaper. Hey, stop! Cut that out! Cut that yeah. out! Go yeah. get your AARP cards and get the fuck out of here. You right. know, so uh, yeah, I'm Pacifica always screaming. Out. Is good for that though, right? The Pacifica oh. is good for that. I mean, you, could, you could almost have an orgy in that thing. <laughs> uh, Rob, this has been a blast. Uh, as show. always, Great David show. Krumholtz, Dunktown, uh, the podcast. Uh, a big thanks to uh, Agata and Anastasia. Uh, they're great. Uh, and thank you, everybody here. Uh, Molly is going to raid somebody. We can follow David on uh, IG. We can follow um, his hair transplant stories. Uh, I'm I'm actually very curious how he's gonna how it's all gonna come out. I want him to get like really long hair tran like you never see that you never see guys with like yeah. really long flowing hair. I would like to see that. I would love to check that out. All right, so uh, I think we're gonna maybe ride uh, raid private street comedy. Uh, Rob, a pleasure. We will see you next week. Uh, okay, and next guys. week we're actually gonna be raising money for a very important cause. Oh, we, we might yeah, or push, might be we might okay. We might push okay. It, yeah. <laughs> we, we are eventually we're going to raise some money for an important cause, but uh, uh, coming up on and this is in the middle of July. If you are in L.A., Rob and I are going to be doing crash test again at Largo, a yes. live show at Largo. I'm going to tell you what the date is. I believe it is. Uh, yes, so the 24th. So nervous. Uh, we're going to be in front of real people on the 24th. The 24th. Uh, oh, tickets are already uh, pretty and not sold out, but very close, which is amazing. So on the 24th at Largo, go to Largo-LA.com if you want to come check us out live. We got to uh, get our shit together. And we, we have, have a uh, amazing together. lineup of stand-ups on that show. It's going to be pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Get. Yeah, I it's going to be great. Uh, all right. So, uh, everybody, thank you so much and we'll see you later. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.